Bam, we're live. Ooh, that was a little weird this morning. That took a second. Good morning. Hey, uh, Manny Spiegel. I listened to J.R. Howell last night and The Thumb and Will Bramstead. They're doing a good job with their show. Dude, that show is going to get so good. I was on, uh, I've been, I was actually spent a bunch of time on the phone yesterday with Taylor and with JR trying to, uh, I want them to do other, other stuff besides programming too. Like why not just do an entire show on like, Hey, what makes a, uh, what makes a big man workout? What makes a little man workout? Who should try to be a professional CrossFitter? Are they really professional athletes? kind of weird to do an entire show try to do an entire show with a live call-in when the phone is still wonky but maybe this morning it'll be perfect if not eh, that's what it is the bun is back yeah it is uh jr uh saber and kelly jr's tooth at the start was gold i haven't seen it yet i haven't seen the show i, I watched like five minutes of it uh, good morning, Stephen Blacksmith, Mike Artur, Ar, Ar, Arturian, Ar, Arutunian. Good morning, Jeez Louise. Good morning, good morning, Savanistas. Bruce Wayne, dude, I'm loving the new thumbnails. Thanks for making those adjustments. Oh, you just made me uh, remember. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try this um, peptide thing. I think. Um, to try to heal my arm. Uh, uh, Andrew Hiller, when he was here, worked on my arm, and my arm feels significantly better. And now uh, I'm going to try this peptide thing. I'm kind of excited about it. Finally, something that California hormones I, I want to try. But I, I, th I think you just... Uh, I think I think you just squeeze the spot where it hurt. Oh, I'm going to have to figure it out. I shouldn't speculate. But anyway, I'm excited. I'm going to see if I can film it, too, when I do it. Someone was like, aren't you scared to, to put a needle in yourself? I'm like, no, I'm not a pussy. Uh, Sevon getting on them roids. No, no, no. Goodwill racing. Not even close. It's, um, I'll know more. I'm speaking out of turn now, but I'll know more. Um, uh, I'm putting on my toe spacers. They are not a sponsor. They should be a sponsor. I'm drinking my Paper Street coffee. They are a sponsor. A great sponsor. More than a sponsor, really. A friend, I would say, I would, I would consider Gabe a friend, and I would consider the uh, California Hormones people friends. The Horm California Hormones people came out for Greg's uh, broken science thing. That was cool. Very cool. It's weird when this whole world of people collides, right? You got the California Hormones people there. You got Greg there. You got Justin Medeiros' parents there. You got Mike there. It was crazy. So many people there. Packed house. Standing room only. I saw some of the video from that event, too. It looks fucking amazing. Yeah, California peptides. I saw, I saw, come, come, it is in an insulin syringe. I don't, I'm not sure what that means, but it, it basically, it comes, it's a vial with some powder I saw, and then they send you some, like, liquid that i'm assuming is like sterile water and you mix the two and then you shoot it into the spot that's injured yeah yeah that's what it is thank you george god some glad someone knows bpc 157 i think that's what um i heard uh the california peptides doctor and andrew talking about i think that's what i'm gonna stick in there it says it works wonders yeah Paulina, oh, Paulina was there. Yeah, that was cool. I got to hang with Paulina. I'm, it's really weird that some people can only wear these um, for five minutes, these toe spacers. I can, I can only imagine. I mean, I'm barefoot 90% of the day anyway. But I could, I, maybe that's why they don't bug me. Like, I can wear them for hours. I could probably sleep in them. I just, I, I just like to put them on so that they're on for two hours during while I do the show. They are starting to smell funky. They are starting to 
smell a little funky. Oh, I'm trying to get um, I'm I'm trying to get uh Hunter McIntyre on. His schedule is crazy. I'm gonna try to get him on later today. Oh, here. Um, home phone probably, but I'm open. But whatever you prefer, we got uh, he I sent him a new headset for Greg to try to get the audio better. But he's in a spot, his current house. There's no Wi-Fi out there. It's out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, what kind of shoes do you wear when you aren't barefoot? I use I wear Victos. I wear these Victos shoes. The toe box is massive. It's massive. I don't want to say it's um no, my fingers smell good. I just got out of the shower. I feel crisp, Olivia. I smell crisp. What do your fingers smell like? Heidi, uh, does Greg uh, have his nipples pierced? I, I will ask him. I will ask him. Um, I have seen his nipples. Uh, I can't remember the last time I've seen them, but I've seen them, and um, I don't remember them. I'm trying to think last time I saw Greg's nipples. We, we must have been swimming somewhere. Probably in Arizona. I don't ever remember. He, he's, not, he's definitely not a tattoo, nipple pierce. Um, general mutilation kind of guy. I'm great. I'm absolutely fabulous. I'm, I was kind of tripping. Um, thanks for asking, Magnus. I was kind of tripping because I haven't done a live call-in show in forever, but it's kind of it's kind of nice not doing those two. I've been loving the guests. Um, I who, I loved having Ezra uh, Adderhold on. I enjoyed having Kelly Baker on. You know what? You know what she said. She said some shit that kind of stuck in my head though. That's like. The, the thing about cursive, I, I, I just so disagree with her that um, cursive isn't necessary. And even if something's not necessary because you won't be using it, I don't think that's a I don't think that's a reason not to do it. I think that's a horrible argument. Um, you, you don't need to eat healthy because you can get insulin. You don't need to birth your child because you can get a C-section. I just I can think of a million things that that's just not a good reason. And I can think of a million reasons why it would be so important to uh, have that practice, even if you never used cursive, just for actually for the skill of uh, and, and manipulating a pencil is huge in the development of a child. Huge. It's like crawling. If you don't teach someone how to use a pencil early in life, it can be it, their shit will be can be fucked up later. And you've seen people who write all fucked up, right? Like they don't know how to hold a pencil like this. So. Same with riding a bike and balance and things like that, things to learn early. Hey, no one needs to crawl early either. Like no one needs to crawl. You can just go straight from being born to your parents carrying you around to walking. But those kids that don't learn how to crawl, even though you're never going to use it in life later on, they are fucked up. 100%. There, there's no exception. You can spot them. You can spot them. You can put them through a few simple tests and be like, yep, that, that person probably didn't crawl. Strong correlate to a lot of fucked up shit. Uh, doing math in your head and not knowing information isn't necessary because we all carry smartphones. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Halpin. Same, same, same Halpin, same, same, yeah. Great example. Um, but you know what? I was shocked an educator said that, but she was, I, me too. I was shocked too, but she doesn't have kids and um, you kind of, you, you, she's, um, she's kind of programmed. I saw this, I saw this meme, right, the other day and it said, would you rather have a doctor talk to you about um, for the 49ers or a mom who has a child that she's super concerned about who's done all the research and read all the, 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 the inserts on all of the uh, 49ers when they come to you, right? You know the doctors have never read any of those inserts and everything that they learned was from pharma. And it's like, yeah, I'd much rather hear from the mom than the medical doctor who is programmed by pharma to make a living uh, pushing their shit. So – uh, Sevi, uh, but they're using all their fingers playing video games and texting. All right. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Uh, David Weed Ke Kelly said it best. You're just old. Yeah. I, I think, um, I think that both can be true. I think I can be right. And I can be, uh, just old. Yeah. The crawling analogy. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, w w there was someone on, on the show recently and they were telling me a story about their kid, and I just straight up said, hey, your kid didn't crawl, right? And they said, yeah. 
That's right. I said, yeah, yeah, I know. And, and that person actually was a doctor. Uh, Sevon's bun. Uh, I'm waiting for the first doctor to attempt to talk me, to me about the 49ers. That will be entertaining. I told you I went to the doctors the um, a few weeks ago, right? And what they said to me. You need this shot and this shot. I can tell by your history. You haven't been in here since you've been 44 years old and you need this shot. And uh, I, I said, no, thank you. And his response was, but it's free. <laughs> but it's free. You might as well get it. It's free. Yeah, and, and that was the other, uh, Jay Magic, that was the other thing, right? The other argument um, the beautiful and intelligent and eminently capable Kelly Baker said was, uh, do you really want to spend an hour teaching your kids cursive when they're every day for a year when they're never going to use it? And, and, and I did push back on this. As opposed to what? As opposed to teach them what? I would rather you not talk to my kid about who they are and their identity and whether they want to be a, the Sasquatch or a tiger and just teach them cursive so that they can build their own identity through some skill that they learned. Oh, I like stories like this. Q Johnson. I just went to the doctors and she said I was due for four different shots. And when I declined, she said, yeah, I wouldn't either. Wow, 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 wow. Um, Q Johnson, I, I see your profile pic. You a rock climber or you're on mushrooms? Which one? Is that Yosemite? Is that water coming down that? You're praying. You got baptized. You're praying to the Lord. Uh, Sebastiano, we miss Brian in your shoes and the other gents stealing your shows. We miss Brian in your shoes and the other gents stealing your shows. I don't understand, but um, fuck, you know what? I don't know if I crawled. Asshole. I have to assume I did. That's a great question. I don't know. I'm super duper duper uh, coordinated and athletic for someone who has no fucking who was just a kid who watched TV. Like I can just do like, I never had problems squatting below parallel or doing thrust. All the CrossFit shit was so easy to teach me. Once I could finally do a pull up in my twenties and all that, like I move good. I move really great. But, but, but I was just a fucking chubby kid to watch TV. Like I was proud if I could get in 14 hours of TV a day. No joke. No exaggeration. I don't know. I'll ask my mom that. I could call her now and ask her. Want me to see what she says? I've never called her. I don't think I've ever called her on the show before. I don't know if she's going to like this. Stand by. I haven't ever called my mom, right? I hope Greg doesn't call when I'm calling my mom. Maybe my mom won't even answer. She might not like this, I'm telling you. And I'm a bit of a mama's boy still. Not not a, a bit. A lot. Oh, it's weird. It's not ringing. Did you guys hear me dial? It's not ringing for some reason. Maybe I'll have to call her on my phone. It says calling. Uh, you y'all don't know, but she's actually pissed. Already she's pissed? I don't know if she's really pissed. Hello, mom? Hello? Hello? Oh. Okay, fine. I'll call her on I'll call her on my phone. That was weird that uh shit, I'm nervous now that I'm gonna have phone problems. Here we go. She might be watching the show and no and not answer. Hi, I'm live on the air. What? I'm live on the air. Why are you calling? Um, did you see that other number call and you purposely didn't answer? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, in the, I'm in the middle of a workout. Okay, sorry. Uh, um, did I crawl? Yes. Okay. Uh, I want to talk more about that later today. I love you. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Um, she's working out. 
I, I listen, I went to a chicken pox party and I told my mom about it and she doesn't even remember. She doesn't even remember. I re but I remember. I remember going to the chicken pox party. It was in, uh, we lived in some like apartments in Walnut Creek, some condos or something. Is Greg coming on or are you clickbaiting us? And then, and then you, you have the laugh emoji. I got him. I really don't like the laugh emoji. Hey, listen, I'm doing it. He texted me this morning and said, how, how would he like me? How would he, how would I like him to come on using what device? I'm in no rush. Oh, I need to pull up the notes. I'm going to add that. I'm going to open up with asking Greg about cursive. Hey, dude, what do you think about teaching kids cursive? I know. Isn't it crazy? My mom does sound young. She's not young. She doesn't have old lady voice yet. It's a trip. I kind of trip on that. Like, when's her voice going to turn to old lady voice? Oh, you didn't hear her? We didn't hear her? You didn't? Well, I, I held the phone up near the mic. I don't know. Uh, what? When did you live in? What's crazy? When did you live? What's crazy? I don't know. What cra cra I don't know, Crazy chopping your penis off is crazy. I don't know. Thinking you're a dog is crazy. Not um, not valuing your health. You know how great it is to wake up every morning and be fucking healthy. Holy shit. Oh, good. You guys all heard it. I lived in Walnut Creek. As, oh, here we go. Here we go. Let's see if the phone works. Hey, good morning. Greg. Jeff Mo, what's up? Oh, shit. It's working. My phone's been kind of trippy. I tried to upgrade some of my um, equipment and shit's gotten a little sideways, but you sound great. Yeah, I'm on the house phone. Let's see how it lasts. My experience is that, like, whether it's cell or home, it's blinky for me and i get two or three really good minutes are you uh, are you anything can happen. are you in your office yeah I mean, you, it's because you're you're off the beaten path right i mean you're, you're significantly off the beaten path your your place my house yeah 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 there's a uh, uh, four houses on a two-mile road yeah, and, and 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 back there in those four houses, it's how, is there a thousand acres back there that those four houses share, or how many? I don't know. It's a good chunk of land. Yeah, it's enough that I think if it catches on fire, we might all be fucked. <laughs> that that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'm trying to say something positive about it, and you're right. You have an escape route, though, right? You have like two or three escape. Yeah, routes. I do that. Yeah, and a handful of vehicles that could do it. Yeah. And we could do it on foot. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't think I yeah. don't yeah, I don't think that's gonna happen though. It's pretty it does it get dry very it doesn't get uh, I guess it does get pretty dry back there in the summer. You know, I don't know, but we would have we'd be in a great position to see in the escape is close and just kind of up a small hill and then down. If it was coming from the other direction it could go the other way whether it was on foot or in car hey what's a, what is a bigger what's the biggest threat out there um where you're at mountain lion fire earthquake definitely not flood at a mountain lion and fire what do you think is the bigger threat you know i look if you're hiking or mountain biking you probably have a different risk profile than someone who's sitting around the chimney right 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 <laughs> um i don't know Hey, when when I'm at your house and the kids are playing at the top of the driveway and it's night and I can't see them, I, I'm not going to lie. I think of mountain lions every time I'm there. Well, because I saw that dismembered deer one time at the top of your driveway. Yeah, you could get got that way without a doubt. And, and when I – some and when take I, dogs and stuff. Yeah, and when I pee – but you know that those olive trees that line your driveway? When I go over there and pee at night, I worry about my own safety. I mean a little bit. Do you ever do that? Do you ever get like – like, I feel like a little kid again, like I'm in my bedroom thinking the boogeyman's going to get me. I'm like, fuck, a mountain lion could just come up the side of the hill right here and grab me and no one would know. You know, dude, I'm uh, I'm a little bit of the other bent. There's a, I've been told that if you'll go out at 4 a.m. and uh, just kind of walk that loop here that's in my neighborhood, yeah, that you're going to see big cats. Do you have any fear of it? 
I couldn't get anyone to do it with me. Oh, but I'd be oh. a little edgy. It's oh, interesting. you were going to do it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, I thought you said, oh, yeah, okay. I think I remember that, too. I think I remember you trying to get some of the um, Robinsons to do it with you, right? In, in fact. Yeah, and you were like, hey, I'll bring a gun. Don't worry. Yeah, that we all should have one. Did you see that thing that happened uh, in Syria? Uh, sorry, no. in, in France? Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know, today, a few hours ago? Syrian, no. refu Syrian refugee with a knife fucking went into a kid's playground? Oh, it's fucking horrible, dude. Horrible. So it's it, it's crazy worst case scenario. And then the 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 headline that I saw said, "Make sure you can this is why guns should be legal." Basically, someone with a knife fucking lit up a playground full of kids. Uh, a Syrian refugee. I hate I hate to blame it on Syrians. Syrians are good people, but fuck. That's what the headline said. Yeah, amazing. Hey, I had this guest on <laughs> yes yesterday, Greg, and they were they were a school teacher for seven years. And they told me that uh, I was like, can you believe they don't teach cursive in some schools? And she told me it's not needed and that I'm just old. And I and I, I, I just I'm just struggling to yeah, accept that. Argument it, for I mean, I, like and I'm always I'm typically part of that traditionalist thing. I don't have strong feelings on it and don't really promote it, use it, teach it, nor did I really learn it. You didn't cursive? Yeah, I mean, I can do it. But it, it looks like it did when I was learning to do it. Right. But I could think of a bunch of reasons why you could do, need to do it. Practically, you just need to learn how to sign your name. Um, and okay. I could, there's got to be some sort of stimulus. You know, we don't crawl anymore, right? But that's you don't want your kids to miss that phase of life of crawling, right? I don't think that. Yeah, I mean, I, understand, I hear those arguments. And, and my thought is, I wonder if that's true. About crawling? About the cursive being somehow the, the, the brain hand connection being fed something deliberate and important via that particular vehicle, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't reject it. Um, have you ever met anyone who didn't learn how to hold a pencil pr properly at a young age, and then as they get Every older, fucking left-handed person I know, including myself. Oh, really? Look what? at how we hold the pencil. It's all fucking upside down and backwards and shit. We're just trying to keep from smearing or not being or blocking what we're writing. Oh. With the fact that our convention moves us left to right is a blessing for you right-handed people. For left-handed people, we have to write like we've got arthritis. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> the hand curls over. You're making this, you're deforming like 270 fucking degrees of arc with your arm and hand so you can see what's going on. Let's just start with that. I, I wonder if there's a uh, a different subset of injuries also that left Maybe that's what makes left-handed people so fucking sharp, the way we have to hold the fucking pencil. Are, are they? Are, is there some sort of data on that? Left-handed people are smarter, got a higher IQ? I, you know, I, I have all the left-handed people call in. I don't know. They have left-handed day and right-handed day. I might have left-handed privilege. <laughs> right. Um, uh Another thing is, is that another argument, one of the arguments was, is like, hey, there's a better way to spend an hour of your day um, during I school. I would go there. Me. But the, but the thing is this, they're not. They're not. Right. So in the hierarchy of dumb shit being done at schools, it's got us. It, it, it can't be very high on, on that list. I mean, as a, as a, yeah, yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to it. <clears throat> I thought I thought I thought you'd have my back more. You're you're not afraid of moving. You're not afraid of uh, evolution of things moving forward as much as I am. I think. Did you like that part of school? <clears throat> uh, no, uh, no, no. I did not like that part of school. Sit around the table and they hand you the brown piece of paper and you trace the dotted letters. I like yeah. sitting. I like sitting with those other kids, but I was not good at it. I was not good at cursive. But I'm so glad I know it. I'm so glad I know it. Yeah, I, 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 I use it. I mean, I use it every day because I take notes here when I'm uh, doing the podcast. Without it, I feel like I'd feel naked. Did you see? Um, did you see any of Trump's thing on CNN? 
no, I can't. I cannot watch that guy. I understand. Did you see any of Pence's? Pence went on there. Like, because listen, I'm gonna have to. I'm probably gonna have to vote for him. So I certainly don't want to have to watch him before that. It just make it even harder. Right. Oh, and, and why? Why do you say that? You're probably gonna have to vote for him. Because he against uh, Biden is an easy Trump. I have to hold my nose and vote for Trump. There's no way Biden makes it to the election. Right? There's right. <laughs> I have no idea. I see the insurance companies that say, "Yeah, he'll make it that far." Which one? The primaries or the general? General. The general. Yeah. Wow. I, uh, you, you know, those videos where they show like the marathon runner and they're like 500 yards from the finish line and they're like, they're crawling and they're standing up and they're yeah, you, wobbling. You're you, you stumbling with three more miles. You know? <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like Biden's in that phase of his life. That's sad. Holy shit. Oh, and what about any of the other guys? What about uh, DeSantos or Pence? Or what about the guy who's running uh, the Democrat guy who, who your acquaintance is with, um, uh, Kennedy? Yeah, I, uh, I like RFK Jr. I think he's a good guy. I think he's an honest man. And uh, he and I had similar views of... Uh, sugar that we do oddly on COVID. And uh, so, you know, what they say about politics and bedfellows, but I have immense respect for him because none of this has been easy for him, which is funny to me. But uh, he's a good guy. And uh, I've supported uh, DeSantis and continue to. But uh, if, you know, if he can't crack enough support to to win the primary, it's it's obvious what I have to do. Um, do you think that if Trump goes against uh, Biden, uh, Trump wins the election? I guess that's a two part I, I question. Have, I don't have a I don't have a strong sense of that. Right. I don't have a strong sense of that. My crystal ball is pretty foggy. And and even if he did win, um, there, there would I, be. I would have told you. Sevi, I would have told you where we're at's impossible. Hmm. And so I don't don't take my word on predictions. And when you say where we're at's impossible, what, what do you mean by that? I mean I have my own my own thoughts on it, of course. I, you know culture uh, <laughs> uh, foreign relations Take your pick. Like an example, our like border, I, our border. Oh yeah, our border. I, I, give you an example. I would have never inflation. Th- right. I would have never thought that a boy could go at, at a high school could say he's a girl, go into a girl's bathroom, sexually assault a girl, get transferred to another school, do the same thing, be a boy, go into the girl's restroom because he's a girl, and rape a girl there. And then when the dad protested at the town hall meeting, he got arrested. I, I, that is the kind of shit that I can't believe that I'm seeing in headlines. And he's being called transphobic. That's the kind of shit I'm just like flabbergasted and, by. And had the school board hidden the fact? Yes. Correct. All, all that. It, it, it's and a, that wasn't part of what inspired what would be the father's obvious outrage. Otherwise, even... But it was all exacerbated by the fact that the school board had hidden the thing, which made his daughter the victim. Right. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. right. It's fucking nuts. That That's the kind of shit that's happening every day that I'm just like, holy shit, what the fuck is going on? Hey, do, do you have thoughts on that? I, I know we've talked about I know you're homeschooling your kids. We've talked about that. We've talked about – is there any – is there – are, are you a um, – I've become a little extreme, obviously, as you know, but I'm like a pull your kids out of school by any edit, by any means necessary. I mean – Yeah, you know, I, I understand people that come to that conclusion and make accommodations in their life and work schedule, jobs. I understand that emotion. 
but uh, I wouldn't wreck a kid's life or your own over it, I don't think. And, and look, we're out, here's where I'm coming from. For me, the pressure was, was inexorable and constant. I had other things going on and wasn't looking for the challenge exactly. And so I put my kids in the best schools that we could, and we had outstanding schools available to us. And it involved getting up at 6 a.m. to hound them out of the sack so that they could eat and brush their teeth and gather their homework, which was an endless process, and stuff all the books in the bag and get in the car so I could get in the drop-off queue. And this would start at 6, and I would be back home at 8, 8.15. And we'd do the same thing again at 3 o'clock, but this time they got to get out of uniform and get a snack because of what's going on next. Tutors, why? Because they're not learning enough at the best schools in the country. So we got tutors coming, and that's basically do the homework session. And then because the PE wasn't worth shit, now we're off to jujitsu or whatever else, gymnastics. And so now I've got seven, eight-year-olds, 12-hour days, 13-hour days, late dinners or rush dinners, and then what's next? And, and I was compensating for all of that. We could fill it in. Piano teacher comes today. Mm-hmm. You know, you made it work. Made a lot of life happen on weekends. And for me, the final straw was Uvalde. And I was driving towards San Diego from here. It was the kid's last day of school. And I was thinking of all the things we can compensate for, all the, the, the cultural and social. And this is from the best schools from the best schools, all the things that aren't fair. And, and I, you know what? I'm not blaming the schools. It's really just that 35 on one or 30 on one or 20 on one. Um, the kids can make sure that they can control the pace at which they learn. It's one on two, the thing I got going, one on three with mine, I'm totally in control of the pace at which they learn. But uh, anyways, Evaldi, the thing that I couldn't compensate for was a, uh, was uh, something insane going on in the classroom and the, and the public officials across the board unable to do anything about it, unwilling to do anything about it, in many cases afraid to do something about it, in many cases acting heroically. But what a gamble. You can play the odds all you want, that, you know, not you, not you, but once you've thought about it and realized it, I think it changes for you when it does happen, if it happens. We, you and I both. That's my rant on that. That was, and, and now, now the, the follow up is the follow up yeah, is what well, was an act of, of, you know, this desperation of I can't, I can't send my kids in there again. I can't do it. Um, became the most liberating thing. In two and a half hours a day, we shoot for six days a week. We hit about four and a half days a week. But uh, at that pace, um, we're doubling the K through 12 national pace. Yeah, doubling. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's fun too. Maybe that's why. Sometimes I, I I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes when I'm around your kids. I question whether it's because you're a good teacher or that they just have that Glassman brain. Cause those kids are pretty smart. You, you got, you got a good, uh, what do you think? You think it's your teaching or they just smart Thanks. kids? Thanks. I think we all kind of come out of the box, pretty much the same, uh, same equipment. You, you're, you're, you have a big head, right? You have a giant head. Yeah. And your son has a giant head. <laughs> Mike. And and he's and he's smart as shit. You think head size has anything to do with how smart you are? Uh, I, I no. Okay. I don't. You don't think it means you have a larger brain in there? I don't know. I've never really given much thought to that. Einstein, I heard Einstein's brain weighed more than the average brain significantly. Anyway. It's worth it's worth it's worth it's worth questioning. You and I have a friend who who um, pulled their kid out of a very popular um, uh, private school in our area that actually I think your kids may have went to um, because she didn't like the curriculum being taught there. That even that place had been invaded and that and that's I've heard nothing but great shit about that. You know who I'm referencing who just pulled their kids out of there? 
Yeah, I think I do. Yeah. Um, hey, look, it's funny. The state of Arizona has a list of uh, things. It's, it's, it's very, very fluid. You can basically uh, homeschool on any basis, but they've got a list of things they'd like you to, to uh, cover by, by broad, you know, label like social sciences. And I laugh and go, well, that's easy. Um, they're not sciences and they're fundamentally fruitless. And in as much energy as you put into them, you're probably wasting time. Check. There, yeah, we covered social sciences in 10 seconds. What else you got? We're just doing, we're just doing qualitative and quantitative reasoning. My kids are going to be able to read anything and write forcefully about it, write intelligently about it and be able to have the, the, you know, rudiments of, uh, of, uh, computational skills. And uh, yeah, I'm talking about some calculus and a little bit of differential equations, but any kid can do that. You can, you can nudge anyone along the line to that. It, by the time they're 17, 16 years old, it's a long time. It's a lot of nudging. You can teach them how to diagram sentences. Here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to sit around and memorize the capitals of the state. Not going to do that. May may take a walk on cursive writing. And maybe we'll get back from the piano or violin what's missing in the and making the pretty curly cues on the page. Maybe not. I really don't know. Well, um, going back to the social sciences, can you give me an example of that when you say the social sciences? I like to, like to look at my replication crisis. Those things that touted themselves as sciences um, have a large corpus of, of uh, published material that won't replicate. By their own admission, it's not my accusation. Right, right, right. If anyone doesn't know what the replication crisis is, I didn't even make the name up. Just look it up. That's what I did. And, and fully supported by some of the the premier CEOs and editors of the largest uh, journals in the world, also saying, "Oh, we have a problem." Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's the uh, you know eight hundred pound gorilla sitting on the fucking couch, and it, it's a significant problem. Hey, you know, we're moving into we're moving into broken science here, and I just did that talk this weekend. Mm -hmm. And I realize on some very sobering level that, you know, is it my fate to have to explain P values to people for the rest of my fucking life? Because mm. I feel somewhat grim. And I remember laughing at my father and us sitting there laughing at him trying to talk to us about P values in Madison, Wisconsin, what, six, seven years ago. Remember that? Yep, I do. Remember how that it, it, it inconceivably unbearably boring that was let's be honest I mean I looked at that I thought it was funny I think people were falling asleep people we have a lot of respect for Someone? and I I, 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 I I you know I could blame him but now it's my turn and I feel like I'd, I'd put me to sleep yeah p-values are tough p-values are a, a, a tough one to make uh, the, cr to keep, really. the crowd's attention. Yeah. Well, I put this out there for anyone that cares. Um, you start with Gerd Gigerenzer. You can pull off the internet several of three or four papers he's written on statistics and p values. And I found it the same way. I heard uh, I heard uh, Matt Briggs saying Gigerenzer in a in a YouTube thing, and I'm like, Giga Renzer, how the fuck would you spell that? And it was just, well, just like it sounds, found it, bingo. And anyone can read that material, and, uh, you know, getting people to, I don't know, it's hard to do. It's hard to do. Have you read it yet? No. Any of Gerd's stuff? Oh, uh, yeah, I've, I've read something of his. I remember when you first uh, pointed him out to me. Let me let me say let me say this, and then you tell me if I'm right or wrong. The, ba the basic the reason why you need to know about p values is because p values are the scam that's used to basically push papers through as legit. Is that big picture? 
the protocol? They are the statistical? they are contrary to any logic or math that supports the reality of p values. They are they are almost universally implicated in something that looks like validation for the alternative hypothesis on the paper to which they're attached. That's a mouthful, right? Yeah. They're used, they're used um, nearly universally to imply some validation to the, to this, to the study to which they're attached. And they, and they bring to that nearly none. So it's a validation method that's used uh, across the board in all the sciences that brings no validation. You, you lean on people and what you get them to say, and this has kind of been well documented. We know what the answers are, but the common impressions are all false. And, in, and, and they also imply something um, uh, that, or state outright state something that isn't true. And that's the problem. All of the statements that that suggest that they determine that the p value is the probability that the null hypothesis is true or false, or the, the alternative hypothesis, which should be the experimental hypothesis, that that's true or false, all of those statements are false. It doesn't provide that probability. And Gergerenzer's work is uh, exposes that. Yeah, yeah, very strongly. And there's a case over at Max Planck. You know, I mean, he's. Uh, and his message has been unchanged for for 20 years on the subject. And it's, he's not a lone voice. There are others. But that's a great entree. It's a good place to start. No, the problem with p-values is uh, approaching 100 years old in terms of its recognition and people that have formally said something about it. And it's got names like Dirty Little Secret. and It's a fascinating story. But it is the reality. And yet, it's, and yet, it's uh, universally accepted at academic institutions across the planet as validation. So look at papers that uh, that do null hypothesis significance testing and report their p values, and ask yourself, what is it about the paper that is that is actually science? Is there a no novel hypothesis of a predicted observable? And and after this weekend, um, is it your life? Is it is this your life now? Or are you are you still are you still uh, uh, flipping that over and over and over? You know, in terms of the the day to day joy of family and kids, um, in terms of intellectual interests or causes, I uh, I think this is important. It's bothersome to me that the writers that are uh, most heralded at the New York Times uh, can, can, without laughter, refer to the science. Hey. That's how you know it. If you, want to, if you want to hear someone's confused, listen when they talk to you about the science. And you got to do it soon because enough people I know are making fun of it with enough gusto that people are going to quit doing it soon. But, um, and the value of sharing this with people and people comprehending this and understanding this <clears throat> and applying it to their day-to-day uh, -day observations of the world around them is to set them free from fucking basically being manipulated. Yes. It's, it's another tool yeah. in the discernment. Uh, um, it's, a it's a hope. I mean, but you know, I'm not an endpoint guy. The, the, this is a this is a very important truth. I think the uh, failures of academic science and consensus science. What's happened is that the validation phase that's that's so important to the science behind technology, science where you actually have deliverables where you're producing things like iPhones and uh, and uh, satellites. Um, that science requires that your your model uh, your model obtains its value its goodness from its predictive strength and in the academic science rather than predicting an observable what you see is a, a hypothesis that's kind of suggested in the intro 
and then an experiment done that pre is presumed to test that around which a null of no effect is assumed in a p-value calculated against the statistic of your choosing. And the larger the sample size, the lower the p-value. Um, almost paradoxically, the whole thing's a scam. The whole thing's a scam. And ultimately, all it references is the probability of the data when they even refer to it in, in literature. People actually write with the thing we're really after. Yeah, the thing you're really after. It's the probability of the hypothesis. The thing that actually gets called the alternative hypothesis. That's the only thing that matters. And what matters is the probability of it. And it needs to be a prediction in the form of a forecast of a measurement where you give a, a, a host of, of conditions that are facts that you, that you project to uh, the future as, uh, as a forecast of a measurement where you're going to say that another fact will look up like this. Ta-da. And replacing that with p-values um, isn't the same. And the question this answers, here I'm going too long about this, it is nope, boring. You're not. The, the question, it is boring. The question <laughs> it answers is, why won't this stuff replicate? And I maintain that it ultimately matters because um, medicine is afflicted with this epistemic debasement. We know this for a fact. Uh, there's a couple comments here. The, the best, the best knowledge we have. Sorry to step on you. Again, no, 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 no. The no, best no, knowledge okay. we have on this subject comes from medical topics like oncology and hematology and the failure and the, and the uh, Begley Ellis paper of, uh, of uh, all but 11% uh, of, of, uh, of uh, science replicator, 11 studies of what, was the, what were the numbers? It's sickening. It's, I'm really good at forgetting it. I'll look it up, but it is sickening. It's the Beg Begley uh, Amgen? Begley and Ellis, yeah. Begley was the Amgen guy. Ellis was at uh, at the uh, University of Texas. And and you had them out to eight. You had a uh, um um. Spoke with you spoke had them with out Ellis to on the phone. Had some great conversations. And Begley, we actually had a common connection through Jim Jordan and uh, Michael Shank, which was mind blowing. Oh wow! But, uh, yeah, had had mutual friends. Uh, in 2012, Amgen researchers made headlines when they declared that they had been unable to reproduce the findings of 47 of the 53 landmark cancer papers. Those papers were never identified, partly because of confidentiality concerns. So basically, the foundation of cancer uh, science, uh, 47 of the 53 papers are uh, unable to be reproduced. Holy shit. Yeah, so it was six of 53, right? And that's my 11%, okay? Right? Yes, sir. Yep, 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 six of 53. In the, in the neighborhood then, okay, that's what I thought. God, it's worse yeah, than six, I thought. It's worse than I thought. I thought, oh, it, oh, it, wow. It's bad enough to wipe it out of your mind once you get hold of it. Because right. where it takes you immediately is to, your oncologist may be, may be quite scientific in the way she approaches the, her work, and, and you know, it brings all of, all of the force of science to bear on the craft, but the craft itself is derived from something that you can't call science. Hey, that's what's that's what's kind of mind boggling, painful Greg, even. Greg, I want to fall into the weeds here. Bear with me. How? Can By the they... way, we still Sebi, We have to say this. We have to say this. We still don't know which forty-seven papers were full of shit, and I understand that one of them has been cited in other research uh, multiple thousands of times. I'm not supposed to say the real moment, but it, it's mind-boggling. It's yeah. still this is a concerning. foundational work in hematology and oncology and known to be bullshit. Uh, didn't This is crazy. It, it, isn't this um, like we know someone is killing someone in the room, but because they told us we're not going to like do anything about it? This is fucking nuts. How how That's do they right. not? It's like the problems that Andrew Kansas has with uh, freedom now it has with uh, with uh, you know 
some of what was going on with the NBA's partners. With with the who's partners? NBA? China in particular, the behavior, the China's behavior and uh, and uh, uh, and Freedom Cantus, and that is named Cantor Ennis, the Celtic basketball player. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Painted shoes. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, it's fuck. This is fucking nuts. What do you do? So, so this this kind of goes back to what you started saying when I first met you. Just soak it in right now. No, no, it's not. But I know it's it's for. uh, uh, I know that there's going to be thousands of people who hear this, and so I want to make sure I drive the point home. I've known this for a while. Um, uh, a few, a few in ten years ago or fifteen years ago, when twenty years ago when I first met you, you used to beat the horn to the staff. You better take responsibility for your own health. Because fucking healthcare uh, is is not uh, forget how you used to word it, but you were really concerned about basically uh, Obamacare, about universal healthcare, and about what it was going to do to the whole level of uh, healthcare for people, and that basically like, hey, you better take care of all the parts you got and not fuck them up. It was concerning to me, and still is, that the chief aim of the public health arm, let's just go right to the CDC, that their efforts in chronic disease seem to be more aligned with hiding um, its root causes or ignoring them or finding league with industry that is responsible by their very product and secondarily by their huge uh, uh, educational effort American Beverage Association, Coca-Cola, you know, Pepsi in France. Um, that, that, that behavior in the chronic disease space was so huge. And I had this underlying kind of back in my mind assumption of there being a better outfit in terms of acute disease, you know? Yeah. And lo and behold, No. The, the same people that, that won't admit um, why it is that that people are obese and have cardiovascular disease and diabetes and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and chronic kidney disease, instead of being honest about and cancer, instead of being honest about the root causes of these things, um, it, it got it got swept away, and so. So here in a in a more acute setting, um, you get the same kind of behavior. Related to, by the way, of course, right? One hundred percent. I want to play. Um, you, you can't see the screen, right? No. I want to play. Um, I want to play this uh, clip. You saw it yesterday for the people at home who are watching. You saw it yesterday. Do you mind if I play this clip of uh, William Briggs, who was speaking at the BSI? Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to, sh- you'll just hear the audio. Let me share the screen here. Um, okay. So th- uh, this is a clip, by the way, that we made that hasn't been put onto the uh, web yet. This is uh, William Briggs. He spoke after Greg yesterday. And I think it's, uh, as I recall, pretty poignant to the conversation we're having. Okay. Make sure everyone can hear this. Here we go. Oh shit! Someone is saying no sound. Well, shit. Yeah, I'm the same here. It's your noise canceling. Hmm. 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 How come I can't hear the sound? All right, that might be a failed attempt. That's okay. 
All right. I'll I'll, I'll I'll make another I'll make another attempt later. Anyway, uh yeah, okay, okay. I hear you guys. You can't hear it. I apologize. Okay. Okay. Hey, uh, Greg, uh, one of the comments here uh, from uh, Jake Chapman is um, science needs to be a process, not an answer. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. Uh, Lauren Lewis says, uh, read the book uh, Naked Statistics. Have you heard of that book? Why does that sound familiar? Let me look. Because you know a lot of books. That's why. I, I, I want to... Um, uh, Pivot here for a second, Greg, and ask you about the origins of the journal, the CrossFit journal. CrossFit journal? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the reason why is there is a tie-in here, uh, and, and hopefully uh, we get to it at the end. Um, can you tell me about your very first idea of, of the CrossFit journal going back or the, the earliest roots or memories like you're laying in bed and you're like, huh, I should write something or – You were writing yeah, for a, a local account. paper, right? In Santa Cruz already? Like a yeah, that's okay, true. Okay, okay. Yep. And uh, uh, yeah, that was like the dark ages. You know, like when stuff went to, like pre-internet, when shit went to the newspaper. Yeah, pre-internet uh, newspaper, right? Yeah. I was in the newsroom and someone had lost the dictionary, misplaced it. <laughs> <laughs> they could not find the dictionary. And I rode my bike like eight miles to sit in there and write this fucking thing. I got my pencil and papers in my backpack. What right? was the name of the paper? It was Santa Cruz Sentinel. So you're in their <laughs> offices and you need a dictionary and you can't find one? Right, correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's no cell phones, you know? Right. Emily found some of my articles. And I like I was immediately enraged at some of the edits that had been done. Oh, like you hadn't you hadn't looked back since you wrote them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you knew you're like, I didn't write that shit. Yeah, yeah. But they make it make a change that there was words that was in the kind of in the editor's vocabulary, and it, if it meant the opposite, whatever. At least they were. She knew the words. And and what would these article? What would can you give me an idea of like just one of the articles? What it would be about? Oh, uh, just um, the uh, the important thing that happens in a gym with a kid or in a sport with a kid is is what I call the transference effect. That the physical province is the easiest place both to to impart and to receive uh, critical lessons for success. Uh, taking control of yourself in that physical space is a, is a valuable uh, 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 precursor to developing that same capacity um, intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, maybe you might say. That was one. Here's another how cool it was riding my bike to to the gym at 5 a.m. I'm out at 4. And you know, along the way, because I'd, I'd kind of keep it residential, you know, to keep from getting creamed by the the, the Wonder Bread truck, you know, at, at 4.30. Right. Um, I'd try and take residential kind of routes. And you, it, you knew around each corner along the way who was up and who wasn't. There's always a house with a TV on and a kitchen light and so on. Someone's getting ready to go set the world on fire over in uh, in uh, Sunnyvale. Kind of cool. It, but just on a, on a side note, to just to talk about what a shit rag the Santa Cruz Sentinel is. When I I, I Google them, <laughs> well, I Googled yeah. them and I put in the name Greg Glassman, and it says uh, CrossFit boss quits after leaked call. We're not mourning George Floyd, and and like it's not a leaked call. It's not. <laughs> It's, yeah. it's not a leak call. It's not. It, it, it should yeah. just say Greg Glassman uh, says we're not mourning George Floyd's death. Yeah, well, cr crazy, fucking. Crazy. I was asked specifically if I was mourning his death. Yeah, I, I, I and I explained it where, whereas I suspected he was murdered. I, in particular, me specifically, no, I wasn't in mourning. Right. I and was it, it was anyone at CrossFit. And I was like, no, nah, not that I know of looking around <laughs> it's pretty funny 
I, I don't I don't believe anyone was actually in mourning either except for his mom. Yeah, you know, my problem is I know what mourning is. Mm-hmm. And I think you can be I think you could be a homicide detective and make it your life's work to to bring righteousness to the extent it's even possible to murder and not to mourn a single one of the victims. Right. It's a different thing. But whatever. Okay. I was supposed to I was supposed to bleed for George. Right. Yeah, you it, actually in the definition here it says that in con, in conventional mourning you would need to be wearing black clothes. There's even an outfit. Deep yeah, sorrow I for just, someone who has died. Yeah. Uh, okay, so 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 th- is is that the is that is that the origin? By the way, uh, a gentleman here in the chats named Eaton Beaver uh, says hi, Greg. <laughs> Eaton Beaver. Hi, Greg. Yeah. I remember you. Okay. Um, do you, uh, so going back to, so is, is that the origins of the journal you were writing for this paper? No, but you, de- you detoured there. I was, you know, okay. I was, I wanted to, uh, to take advantage of, of uh, we had people doing the workouts, right? We were posted into the net and, uh, and uh, there was a call from some of the same people that had that had nudged, nagged, demanded that I get a website and put workouts up, wanted newsletter, wanted material. So I was creating content for my for my looming le- web venture as well. And how often was, was there was this- a lot of stuff. It, look, it was easy when the criteria is. Let's write those things that if someone had put this in my hands 20 years ago, I'd be 20 years further down the road. Did I have that kind of information? It was a hell yeah. So, so the same people, they would like, I, I, and I remember you had the, the, the client who wanted to take, go on the road and he wanted to get the work out. So he said, well, you yep. start a blog and you're like, what the fuck is that? And you, you didn't even own a computer. It was and then- pre-blog. It was pre-blog. We just had a, a, uh, uh, HTML website up and I had a medicine ball, it's, it's Dynamax ball in my garage and this fucking shitty dusty box that Ben had brought over and an amber monitor, old, you know, the orange monitor and uh, uh, a key, the keyboard sat crossways on this, uh, this old what, 86 box with the dust bunnies and it kept in the garage. That was that was the amount of regard the whole enterprise had. Don't bring that thing in here; it's filthy, right? Yeah, like a stray cat. And that in the web, the, the workouts were published to that, and so a vehicle delivery vehicle for more information, other than sitting on the medicine ball in the garage. The next thought was to um, to uh, emailed. Uh, uh, PDF. Mm. And that quickly ran afoul of uh, spam stopping services and required we get involved with a subscription based delivery vehicle. How often did you send out that PDF? Uh, Monthly. And and, and did it start as a newsletter? Yeah, I guess you could call it that. Did it start off as one page? I picked, I picked journal, but it was fundamentally a newsletter. It, but I tell you, once I was, you know, mm-hmm. once I'm like, listen, get your car out of the fucking garage, throw all this shit away, get some dumbbells, put some rings in the rafters, you need a pull-up bar, use that doorway. I mean, from there, and and the, get inside the fridge. I mean, you're off to the races. You've got three, four years of journal art without veering off of some fundamentals that you realized in the box on a, on a fucking weekly basis if you're slow, daily if you're paying attention. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me pause you here and get into some nitty-gritty. So you start this, um, uh, this, this newsletter journal thing that goes out monthly as a PDF. You're sending it, I guess, via Hotmail. Um, uh, <laughs> Is it just yeah. to people internally in the gym? Is it um, who 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 are the readers? Is it just like thirty members? No, it was like you know, it was it it quickly became a twenty five dollar a year, I think, uh, uh, offering. And then, how did people find out about it outside of your gym? 
I'm not sure. I think we might have given away what is fitness. And that was the second issue. But I remember Lon Kilgore telling me it was that the, the file numbers associated with that download were in excess of anything that had been done in exercise science. Okay, and and I want to bring another here. When um, during the history of the journal, do you remember the very first PDF you said out? What year that was? The first newsletter, first journal. I think it's two thousand one. Okay, and when I'm was guessing, the, when, I think I think that the first seminar, the website, they all kind of happened at once. Okay, so the seminar very much kaboom within eighteen months, all of them did the did the so in my narrative the journal articles make up the seminar but from hearing you speak now that there was it wasn't exactly like that it was more like synergy like a dna helix like they were growing at the same time around each other without any sense of its utility or there being an underlying business the core of the seminar the L1 material contained from the journal articles given, the journal articles themselves written, the website, none of that was seen in my head really as any, anything integral to a dynamic process that you'd eventually call a business. Understood. But they, they, but they were each played a valuable role in dissemination of a message, and I would include in that the affiliate program as well. So you've got, you know, I mean, look, I'm asked, I'm to ask to get on a freaking airplane and go across country and talk to a bunch of good boys and girls, you know, at a law enforcement academy, a federal agency, and the the level one has its pedigree from Department of Justice guys telling me they're going to come out and learn my method, and they won't get it paid for unless they go back with a certification. And so I, that sent me into the stationery store, rummaging through a file cabinet, looking for a certification blank. So I got <laughs> one with a gold seal, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's see, let's not scrimp here. This is valuable information. So I got the one with the gold seal and signed it, and you know, crazy, right? How, no, how, and like so, ask me, ask me where I thought that was going. I didn't want to get caught. Right, right, forging a certificate. Yeah, yeah. Um, um G- Greg, how many? And I'm asking you a series of loaded questions because I'm trying to take this somewhere back to broken science. How many journal articles were completed before the first seminar? Do you know? Could it have happened the other way around? The first seminar happened before the first journal article. Yeah, they're going on. They're going on simultaneously. They're not. They're not unrelated. You know, the seminars started with a it, like three days, and I'm going to teach every movement and, and drop every fact I know about nutrition and exercise, all the valuable shit. And it was more than anyone could possibly take in. And in some cases, you might have survival issues. It was a, it was an overdose. The, it was like signing up for the games. Like, like what's CrossFit again? As you walk out into the stadium, the seminar was an overdose. Totally. Yeah, I remember that. Even even when I went there, it was th- it was. Yeah, yeah and it, it, it the big turning point came in Michigan. And um, what we year was that? What year? Well, no, it was when it went to two days. But I realized that what we needed to do, instead of trying to spew 100% of what we thought was important and hope that you catch 80 or 90% of it, what we needed to do was distill our offering to to the 30% that you missed it completely if you don't get and expect 85 to 90% of that. Okay, okay. And it, and it was an overnight improvement. And you could feel it. You could feel it in the delivery, and that, and from that point, the ups of what is fitness, what is CrossFit, the the, the much uh, dreaded nutrition cert, 
all of those is are now simultaneously kind of kind of solidifying into standard pieces. Now, while this is going on, I'm still the only one lecturing. Right. I, I had set up people, demo girls, and I had to do all the talking. And I had people who could lead workouts. But by your second or third workout, I mean, it was, it was a games-like schedule. You know, over a weekend, you're going to do six workouts, right? Yep. In front of everyone where we put your score on the board. It was, it was gnarly. Uh, here's, here's where I'm going with this. Ready? Well, oh, let me ask you another, one more loaded question first. The, the, you, when you say that just like if 80% of it could stick, if you were to draw a parallel between um, broken science, the knowledge needed to, to be, be armed with the, the material and broken science, is, is the p-value part essential or could it be the, 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 if you get 80% of it and that part falls outside and the 20%, you're still good? essential there's there's no way to do this without a trip to to oz and pulling down the curtain and seeing the fucking wizard and that is no hypothesis significance testing okay you you pull that away and there's so much less there okay and and there's also there's critical need it's not this isn't just a this isn't like jigsaw puzzles or so deep or crossword there's you know it's a there's something at stake here and what's at stake is the the costs of bullshit science and what i mean by bullshit science any science that won't replicate in, in any critical field and i'm not talking about theories in psychology or gender studies that may or may not replicate i'm talking about a, a, a oncology and hematology giving giving uh, uh, cancer and cancer treatments a misleading start. I, I'm, I'm just picturing um, in, in, in palatable um, lectures of like I'm, I just wrote down three things that you you taught me about. Uh, it's, it's Thomas Kuhn, right? The, the 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 book that sent one of the book elements or you know cornerstones of what sent science astray. There's the Daubert versus Fryer uh, uh, Supreme Court case about Daubert admissibility. Uh, for expert testimony, and then the Amgen, just the Amgen situation about replication crisis. I just hear those three things. Like I've heard you, t and there's a 20, 50, 100 things like that that you've sat me down and like explained to me, right? And I've heard you explain to other people twenty times. I think each one of those could be a journal article or a lecture given by you. You're right. That over the next two years. And we put together a hundred of those and assemble this whole thing. Right, and then next right. thing you know, you have a level one in fucking broken science. And they're fun. They're fun, exciting things. They're like, it's, it's, um, it's, there's, there's the Jack or the Ripper component in all of them. Right. There's all, there's like fucking the, the main characters are gnarly and all those, and all those stories and the narratives. When you speak to fitness groups, and you have a public moment where you ask folks, what's the value of fitness? And what you hear is, is some rather uh, wonderful, if not canned and expected answers about health and wellness. And, and you know, maybe someone will climb out on a limb and talk about that, what I call the transference effect, the idea that the physical province is the easiest place to to send and receive critical lessons. You get all these different answers, right? Mm -hmm. But if you get people to respond anonymously, everyone's trying to get laid. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> it's right. a completely different right. thing. Right. They want to be sexy, look better naked, gets all the, all the big scores. You right, know? right. And so, so I had that always going for me on the CrossFit side of things. And in fact, that... And, and that's all healthy. It's good, good, good on, you know, good on everyone uh, imbued heavily with that concern. So it's not yeah, men will die for look. points. It's men will die to get laid is, is the more accurate. That's true. Okay. And the points are proxy for that. Yes. Okay. But I have similar views of oil paintings and other, other works of creation. Okay. But, uh, uh, you know, 
separate from that, uh, what created uh, the disparity, the discrepancy between what was practiced, what was taught, and what is real, uh, I took advantage of that but from whence it came and discovering from that saying from those successes that we couldn't move the ball down the court without addressing some of these other things like obesity and cardiovascular disease and immobility. These are things that are, that are uh, given lip service on CNN and Fox. And we have some answers about in the party line. Uh, misses the essential point. What's going on here? And it turns out it's the same disarray, the same uh, affliction that has afflicted fitness has afflicted the health space. And so if you ask what is it that's common to what's wrong in, in fitness that is also wrong in health, right? It's a big jump there from that one to that one. And, and look at everywhere we looked at too. I mean, from the Gatorade uh, uh, hydration uh, fiasco uh -huh. to, uh, wow. you know, blah, 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 the CrossFit versus NSCA. Uh, there's enough here to bring up uh, on 50 different shows and go into in indescribable detail. But what emerges is a recognition and finally congeals in this broken science is a recognition that the bulk of academic science is is significantly corrupt now there's and i don't mean corrupt necessarily in the sense of coke paid for that study that's bullshit because there's a lot of that but there's a, a another sense of corrupt like a corrupt file and that's something that's uh, something that is in its structure um altered so that it it doesn't deliver the goods anymore and that's what's happened in science in academic science and the uh, natural sciences uh, biology, chemistry, physics, um, uh, math are, are by comparison exempt from the social sciences and all the stuff that calls the rest of it that calls itself sciences and in fact medicine itself and by extension public health, which brings a whole nother level of corruption and meaning to the terms. But these fields are tainted and they're tainted by the same thing that makes the the wrong advice coming from your doctor about your kid's obesity or mislead you about vaccines it's the same it's the same nonsense or did about about whether grandma should squat or not you know her chief medical complaint is she can't get out of her chair and you're saying she shouldn't squat what the fuck you know and someone someone should turn the lights on for a minute here Greg, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you two 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 comments here from the comment section. Uh, Heidi Kroom, uh, when is the next broken science event? How do I get in? Um, I will sneak in if needed. Uh, Heidi, you don't need to sneak in. I will hold it open for you. There's no date yet, right? No. Okay. Uh, and then and then here's a common question uh, you get, and um, uh. I'd like to take a stab at the answer and then, and then you, and then you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, Dan Guerrero, what's the action item here? And the action item, I don't think falls on anyone outside of Greg. Unfortunately, I think the action item all falls on Greg to continue to um, maybe parson this, this narrative out. Uh, is that a word? Parson, parse, par yeah, parcel, uh, this narrative out into, into palatable, exciting, fun pieces and uh, it's so, so that it's palatable for people who, who, who don't get to just hang out with you by the chimney all night and hear it all, you know, over and over and over. I think it all falls on you. What do you, what do you say the action item is? Because you know people want to get involved and yeah. do something for you, but, but really it's, it's all on you, right? I would, I would yes, and this could be, um, you know, when the little boy stood up and said the emperor's naked, I'm sure it didn't just occur to him. And there may have been others that had talked about it. He just took it upon himself to stand up loud and, and blurt it out. And so I had someone ask at this talk, so Greg, what are you going to do now? And I tried to explain, I just did what I'm going to do. I'm just <laughs> like, <laughs> you imagine, hey, the emperor's naked. You're like, uh oh, here come the emperor's. You know, the emperor's guard, they're coming my way. What are you going to do now? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, uh, I, 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 
that's okay for me, Savvy. I've yes. never been in point oriented and process oriented. Right. Well, that and Jake said that science is a process, not uh, uh, I forget exactly how he worded it. But listen, what Heidi says, Heidi fully gets it. Heidi says the action item is here. Take personal responsibility for your own health and do your own research. Yeah. I mean, th th that's a that's a huge piece of it. Right. Boy, you know, they, there's a message you can't deny. Right. And, and you're giving you're providing tools to allow people to uh, assist them in the research. I hope so. Right. Well, you give giving me those tools. Yeah, I mean that 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 fundamentally is the idea. Hey, there was a uh, uh, in Sap in Sipiama's uh, uh, Veritate. Um, the let's start with the truth. Uh huh. Uh huh. Right, and that answers so much of that question. Is is to what's next because i i don't have i don't have ready answer for that i also probably the wrong person to ask because i don't believe in remedy i don't think that this problem fixes i think the fix is in and so but what i do believe is that understanding of the totality of the problem in it and in its specifics is something that most anyone can do and it's some critical mass and help people do that. And I, I am open to because the Joe Westerlin, the Joe Westerlin theory that that, that surmounts at some point to revolution. But I am, I'm no expert on that. I don't think we ever got to that point with CrossFit. But I did see the Westerlin influence that, that, you know, he said it was one or two percent. It's a magical number. And, uh, uh, it was funny to see the popular media pick up on CrossFit so strongly. And I thought maybe it was just the form of the revolution, just a recognition. Um, but uh, I, I, I don't believe in mass conversion events. And we're still at this point of, uh, let's start with the truth. If there ever is going to be a fix, and I don't believe there will be, just like with the, with the, with the public health problem, and that's where that let's start with the truth first reared its head was I don't see a solution that that doesn't incorporate the realities of what's causing the problem. And so I that's something I can contribute. Um, we are uh, approaching by time um, where I have to go. But people have questions. You too. You too. Yeah, I think our kids are skating together this morning. They are. Um, uh, let me ask you, uh, Greg, this is a pretty broad question. Uh, what are your thoughts on mental health? I love this show. Uh, do you have any thoughts on just that? I know that's a pretty broad question, mental health. And has it changed in the last 15 years? Because I feel like the Greg I met uh, 15 years ago would be like, hey, just get out there and do 100 burpees. And change your diet. Tighten up your diet. Yeah, I'm the wrong person to answer that. Yeah, I've got yeah, it's it's other show kind of stuff. You know, let me tell you something real quick about mental health, but then bye. Now nah, later. Okay, good. I got it. Thank you, uh, Jessica I'll, Valenzuela. I'll says open your a can of worms. I don't want to open. Right. Okay. We'll do a whole show on it. Open the can of worms. Uh, Jessica Valenzuela, you're cutting Greg off. I'm taking. I'm take, taking his kid to the skate park. Taking his kids to the skate park. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Nate Dog says, Savon, I want to make a trip to attend the next Broken Science Initiative. Will you allow me to camp in your Garden of Eden and eat from the trees? I don't know. Mm. Be, you can sleep in my neighbor's yard. Do I have to deal with Adam and the snake? <laughs> right. All right, brother. Uh, thank you. All right. uh, great conversation. Yeah, um, and, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks for coming on, man. All right, bye. Mr. Greg Glass, founder of uh, CrossFit. I need to play a, they often have Greg as a written down. It'll say he's the co-founder of CrossFit. And he never really pushed back on that. But I found something the other day. It's an audio recording. It's an interview. Maybe there's even video with it. It's old as shit. 
but it's an interview of Lauren Glassman talking about how when she met Greg, he was uh, completely obsessed with CrossFit and, and the creation of CrossFit, which would make it that he's not the co-founder, that he's the founder. I need to play that. I have it somewhere. Ms. Valenzuela, uh, I'm being selfish and want this show to keep going. Yeah, he'll. Keep, I think he'll keep coming on. I think. I think as long as I don't fuck up, but I never know. He's he's a gentleman. If if I did fuck up, he he might not tell me. Uh, Dan Guerrero, uh, David Goggins, unhealthy people into putting down the fast food. David Goggins, unhealthy. Just shame them. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but okay. All right, guys. Uh, thank you. I am trying to schedule one more show today with Hunter McIntyre. I'm, I'm dying to hear. He's got his uh, battle, battle, uh, battle, field battle, field battle, battle brigade thing happening this weekend. Fuck, what's the name of that thing? Battle Bunker. He's got his Battle Bunker going on uh, this weekend, I think. Or, or is he running a race this weekend? I, I don't know what's going on. But he he did win High Rocks. We got to get him on, even if it's just for a few minutes. And uh, we got we got to find out uh, what's going on with him. He's the fucking champ again. Love Hunter. I'd want to do anything I can to uh, support him. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, Battle Bunker. Let me guess. He's going for a world championship. You know what I like about you, Mason, is you really walk that fine line of... Um, kicking people but not knocking any teeth out okay i gotta go